So we're going to try to make a Lego here, and uh, in order to do that, if you get at your trusty digital calipers and try to measure these things up, you can get a rough idea on what the size of these are going to be. In uh, making sure you zero it and do it in millimeters, but do a quick measurement of what you think your things are going to be. Now, to start off making these little Legos, we want it to look like it's got a cylinder at the top, right? Cylinder. And I'm going to need to give it a height. And the height would be what? What do most, most folks get as a height? 1.56. 1.56. Here we'll say our height is... 1.5 comma and then we'll do our diameter we'll do diameter in this case because it's gonna be a little bit easier other than writing the radius and we do some splits and that's gonna be about 3.8 according to this caliper now when we do these print when we print these out we may have to then go in and adjust these to make them look the way we want but if I go ahead and I click it now you can see that first little Lego bit in there. So that's the one with my diameter and the height of 1.5. Now, if it's 1.5 millimeters, you got to think about how many layers that is. Because if I'm printing it at 0.2, then it's going to be, uh, you know, how many layers is how many layers is there in one centimeter if I'm printing at 0.2? Bueller, Bueller. If I'm doing a 0.2, how many times can it will it take before it's one full, you know, millimeter of those or, or centimeters of those? Don't know. All right, I'll let you think about that for just a second. Before I go any further, I'm going to add in here a dollar sign fn, and I'm going to say equal, and I'm going to make this be about 30. Why am I doing that? That should make this look more round. Yeah, there we go. So now it looks more round. It's actually giving me more. Uh, more facets going around rather than the way it was a moment ago. Now, what I also want here is a cube. So I'm going to do a cube. And what would just say, I'm looking for one here that's just one single width of Lego. That one is about 6.8. I'm going to round these off for our, for our little example here. OK? It'll make it a little bit easier, I think, for what we're doing. But we'll say. No? Well, let's see how it works. Six point, we'll say 6.8. That'll be my cube. If I go ahead and click there, you'll see I'm missing a semicolon. Click, and there's my cube and my cylinder. Now, generally, I don't use the uh, center true, but in this case, I'm going to say center equals true, and then click again. And now it's moved it to the center of that object, which is hiding the cylinder inside. So what I sort of need to do here is move that. And what command do we use to move stuff? Translate. Translate. And I need to move it down. So 0 for x, 0 for y, and moving it down, I want it to be half of whatever my cube height is here. So if I divide that in half, what do I get? 3.4. Minus 3.4. So I want to move it down minus 3.4, otherwise the piece will be sticking out of the bottom of it. Yes, I need the square braces, which I consistently forget either one or both of the first time I run it. There we go. So now we have one little Lego block, more or less. Right? Everybody see it? Everybody get an idea on what I did there? I basically made a cylinder. I made a cube and moved it down a little bit. Those are the couple different things I did. And make it become modal. Now what I want to do is I'm going to do introduce something that we haven't really shown before, and that is the idea of doing a module. Okay, guys, look up so you can see this part. So if we look uh, up on the screen, you'll see that I'm going to make a module, and I'll call this uh, Make One Lego. And this is a module in the sense is actually just like a function. So it's I am creating 
uh, something that I can call on again and again. Modules are nice because you can kind of reuse them. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tab all these guys in. If you highlight them all and hit tab, it'll all tab in for you. And now, anytime I want to make a Lego, I can say make one Lego, and I'll make this one block. Now, if I were to test this and do a render right now, you'll notice that nothing comes up. That's because modules don't run unless you call them. So you need to say somewhere in your code that I want to make one Lego. It is case specific, so you need to make sure if you follow what I did, I camel cased it as make one Lego. You have to do it exactly the same. When I click this and render it, now I get it. If I wanted to make another one of these, I can. And if I said make one Lego again, it'll end up being there, but it's right on top of the other one. I can't tell the difference. So if I were to use the move command, which is translate, and try to remember my square braces, and I'll just do 10, just to, for example, and close square braces. Don't put the semicolon on after this, which I do all the time, because then it won't move what comes next. And now I've got two of those guys. So I could just go through and continue to make one, you know, and then put a new translate and make another and another one and another one if I wanted to. I could take that and copy and do it again. But this would become kind of tedious because most Legos are all going to be in the same kind of areas, right? So here I could, you know, make my Legos jump all over the place. But instead, why don't we use something called a loop, a for loop, actually. Let's go to my cheat sheet so I can tell how I actually do this in the context of here inside of this language. So I'm looking here for four loops. So it's giving me three different options, and I can't totally tell which one I want here yet. So the idea of a for loop is kind of simple. What it does so here at the beginning is it says, for as long as the statement here is true, as long as these conditions are true, I want you to do this again and again and again. Now, what it does is it's using i as a counter. So i is equal to 0 the first time it goes through. The second time it goes through, it'll be equal to 1. The next time it goes through, it'll be equal to 2, 3, 4, 5. Once it goes through and it's done uh, counting, then it'll only do it five times in this case. So if I were to, uh, let's, which one should I copy here? I will copy, so this one's actually doing it based on a different increment. I think this one's just over a range. So I'm going to copy this one, and I haven't really tested this, so let's see how it works. And I want to do the following. I'm going to go and take my make one Lego that I have. And I'm going to stick it inside the middle here. I'm not really looking to rotate it or do any of that other crazy stuff. And if I were to do this right here and do a render, I'm going to just get that one block again that's moved over 10. The reason is that it's not doing a step at all. It's not making a step. So in order to make it do that step, let's use the number, uh, the, use the variable and multiply that in. So I'm going to use the i, and I'm going to use the asterisk, which means to multiply. So if I multiply that middle one, the first time it goes through, it'll actually probably be 0. And the next time I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so then the, that value right here will end up being 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I hope. <laughs> ah, and there we go. So if I go ahead and do a render, you now see that it's creating a series. Remember, two fingers, will, you can click and you can drag it over if you're on the laptop. Now let's make it so that it's actually going to fit in that space. Now our cube diameter is, our cube width is 6.8. So if I made that one also be 
I should now be able to do that. So what's nice about this is that this little module here is really easy to take that that make one Lego and now do lots of things with it. Because I can call that in other ways. I can now, now take that same thing and let's use that other, the other loop value that was there. Where was that other crazy loop? Doo -doo -doo. This one is actually setting i to a set of values. So if I wanted to, I could uh, say use this exact one here and get a little bit crazy. Or if you look, this one actually does like steps. So you can make really interesting kind of shaped Legos. Oh, somebody's head just exploded. Was that good? That was a good yes? <laughs> so if I use this as uh, my crazy example and I make one Lego be the part and I'm going to comment this one for a moment and do a run. Now you can see what, <laughs> what it's doing with that one. Let me comment this guy for a second. So it's, it's taking that one and it's rotating at all these different shapes and sizes from it. If we look at the example that they had, they had that rotation go like that. That, that's the example they were showing. Now, would I want to do that with a Lego one? Probably not. <laughs> if I wanted to make it maybe do go around and make a Lego that uh, goes all the way around a circle, I could have it do that other example, though. If we take this one out and go back to here, we could say... We put this one in. Let's see what this one does exactly. Do a render. So looking for unknown variable i. Oh, I forgot the beginning of the for loop. Bad copy paste. So this one is taking those spheres and putting them around in a circle. If I were to take my make one Lego. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Let's make my increments bigger. Let's make my rotation larger. Wow, it's the funniest Lego I've ever seen. So what other options would, could you do with this? Could I make a Lego basically of any size I want? Uh, that's better. That's what I was kind of shooting for. So you could make Legos that would never work with normal Legos, right? These ones don't have the gridded pattern, so they wouldn't fit on... on standard Legos, but you could make some pretty interesting Legos by doing it. All right, so that's a really quick example of how to do it. They, if I just jump back to my first example that I really uh, or is more what I'm looking for from all of you is to take the simple example here where you're using just a standard for loop You've got the, this simple for loop that's just translating it and giving you a row of blocks like that. Okay?